Hi, welcome to Package Main, a channel about Go and not only. I'm your host Alex Pluto and today we'll be talking about fuzzing in Go. Let's get started. Fuzzing or fast testing is a method of giving an expected input to your programs to test for some possible crashes or edge cases. Fuzzing can shed a light on some logical bugs or performance problems, so it's always worth adding fast tests um, to programs where stability and performance matter. Now, there are already a few fuzzing projects in Go, um, well supported, for example, go fuzz by Dmitry Vyukov, GoFuzz from Google. But we are not going to review them today, since we have some great news, as Go team has accepted proposal to add fast testing to the language. Um, it will be available in the Go 1.18. At the moment of doing this video, Go 1.18 is only in beta. So let's first install it using the GoTip program. So we have to install the GoTip first if you don't have it yet. And then do GoTip download. Great, we installed our latest Go. Now let's check what version do we have. So go tip version. And that's exactly 1.18. Now we need some pet function for which we'll add fuzzing later on. And I'll do some mistakes intentionally so we can uncover them later. Let's write a simple function called equal that will compare two slices of bytes um, element by element. So called function equal and the first slice and the second slice. It will just return a boolean and um, yeah let's do something simple so if and just compare element by element otherwise return true. Now let's add some tests to this function. And first of all, I'll add some regular unit tests. So as we normally do, we create an underscore test go file. And um, we can do test equal, which will expect testing dot capital T. And let's call, for example, if equal, if not equal, for example, bytes, and let's do something like that. Pass. Second would be the same. Then maybe d error expected true got false. And now let's run our tests to see if it works or not. So we'll be using go deep test. As you can see, the test passed, but uh, it covers only a simple use case. So now let's add fast testing um, in order to uncover our edge cases. What's cool about fast tests in Go 1.18 is that you can add them directly into your underscore test.go file. Uh, they just have to start with fast instead of test. So I'll give an example, um, fast equal. And uh, they expect the, the new type, which is um, testing dot uh, capital F. Now we can use f.fast to write fast test. So f.fast, which will expect the callback function. So we will have testing dot capital T and then um, input to our function equal. So that would be byte in this case, byte. And A and B in our case will, will be filled by this generated input. So we can call equal A and B. Let's see that that's our fast test. Now it's very important to understand that fast test can only support one target. So in, in our case it's is this block that calls our function equal. Great, let's try to execute it. To execute fast tests, we need to add dash fast argument to our go test program. So go deep test, then minus fast.
great, it failed, and um, now you probably know the error, and it says index out of range. Obviously, our equal function didn't expect that slice A can be can have a larger length than slice B. Obviously, we are working with very simple example, but uh, nevertheless, it can work for more complex functions. So the idea is the same: we generate um, unexpected input and run it through our program and see what happens. All right, let's go back to our equal function and fix it. We can add an easy fix to compare the lengths of two slices. So if len from a not equal len of b, we can surely return false. And now let's run the fuzzing again. Now, as you can see, it runs, it doesn't show us any errors, but at the same time, it doesn't stop. It was 12 seconds already and just keeps running, keeps running. Um, let me cancel it. Now, it's up to you to decide for how long to run the fuzzing. Um, it's possible that it will run indefinitely if it doesn't find any errors, like in our case, but we can add an argument fast time to set the limit for how long to run the fuzzing. So let's try it out. So we just need to add a fast time that expects some duration, so for example, five seconds, and um, yeah, for example, to run all. All right, as you can see, it ran for five seconds, didn't find any errors, provided us with some output. Now let's try to go through this output and understand what does it mean. Now the first metric we see is elapsed. That's the total amount of time that has elapsed since our process began. Okay, the second metric is xx. That's the total number of inputs that have been run against the fund's target. And the last one, which is zero in our case, is the amount of interesting inputs that have been added to the generated corpus during the execution. Please be aware that fuzzing may consume a lot of memory and may impact your machine's performance, so you should be very careful running fuzzing in your CI environment. That's it for today, I hope it was interesting and helpful and see you later.